In this presentation, we will continue on to part 8 of our C Corporation Comprehensive Problem. This time, we're going to be reconciling the retained earnings within our C Corporation tax return within the 1120. Here we are in our form 1120. Last time, we had been entering the income statement, and we got basically our first page here to reconcile on a book basis. So this will be ultimately on a tax basis once we're done, but we've got it first to tie out to the book basis of the 1461500 That ties out to what we have here on basically the income statement for our book income statement. We then went to page 6 to check the balance sheet, our balance sheet not in balance. Uh, total assets do not equal liabilities plus the equity. And we're trying to figure out, okay, why would there be a difference there? Possibly. One thing is there could be this M1 adjustment that's messing us up. And there could be dividends involved. So first thing we note is we see that the difference between these two numbers we would expect to be the net income. It is if we if we subtract these two numbers out. We're going to say, all right, uh, we got these two numbers here, retained earnings. 4408643 minus the 3170000. That's th this number for the book balance. But that's not what we had on the first page. The first page had this number. And that is actually the ending number being used here. And it's not being used. So, so something's wrong. The, this, the change between these two numbers should be this number. Now, why is this number different? Because of the M1 adjustment. So what we would like to do is basically negate this M1 adjustment because we want to think about those one thing at a time. So where, does, where is this M1 adjustment to be derived from? You'll recall it's, it says depreciation and we put our information in the depreciation schedule here. Now we would only have an M1 adjustment if we were recording the book depreciation different than the tax depreciation as we are here. Now, if you were rolling forward the tax return from the prior year, it would already have this, this kind of adjustment in place I'm going to remove that for now and then put it back in place. In other words, when we enter this information in, you'll recall that uh, we, we had to, to, to record that M1 of that difference with the book depreciation calculation. We went into the uh, balance sheet information and we put this number four here for the book to, to make that M1, the book to the, to the tax uh, depreciation. It would probably be there. It would be there. It would roll forward if you're doing a continuing return. What I'm going to do right now is, is take that out, and you can make a note of this. You can say, all right, I'm making a note for the M1 for depreciation. I'm going to use, use setting four, uh, you know, in the miscellaneous section there. And then I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to say, now that M1 should be gone. Now, if you're scared to do that in the software, you know, you could you could kind of put a negative depreciation and, and remove the M1 manually that way, that way by going directly to the data input to the override screen and manually putting in uh, an M1 that would basically override it with the O and do it that way. But I'm going to, so in any case, I've removed the M1. Now this number is the same as this number. There's no reconciling differences. Therefore, the difference between these two numbers should now be equal to our net income. So you would think then if I took the 4631500 minus the 3170000, I get the 1461500. That ties out to what I would think it would be. Now, it still doesn't put us in balance here. So we're still not in balance. Why not? Let's take the difference between those two. We'd say, all right, there's the 6363500 minus the 6283500, 80,000. And we would expect that to be the dividends, which it is. So that, that difference is, is the dividends. And we said there were 80,000 of the dividends. So now we're going to enter the, the dividends into our software. I'm going to do that by scrolling down to the M2, which is a calculation of the retained earnings, which starts at the beginning balance plus the book net income. And then we have the distributions, cash distribution. I'm going to jump to that cash distribution data input screen. That's where I'm going to put this 80,000. And then I'm going to go back to uh, the forms. So now we're at the 4551500. And that puts us in balance. So this number ties out to this number. That number is what we would expect. We can tie that number out to basically the, the balance sheet. If I was to unhide some cells up here, I'm going to unhide the cells by going from uh, C to F, let go, right-click the selected area, 
unhide. So we should have the 4555. And if we look at our trial balance, it would include this is the beginning balance plus the, uh, the draws or minus the draws. And then if I was to highlight all of these, it's going to take all the credits minus the debits. And that's going to be the 4555, right? So that's going to be the ending uh, retained earnings. So now we're looking good. Now I'm feeling pretty confident going forward. We have a lot of uh, notes over here that we have to have to deal with. We have a lot of yellow on our, our, our trial balance. However, I can take care of those. I feel pretty good that I can take care of those one at a time. And if there's a problem with it, then I can fall back to a point at which I know my, my income statement's in balance and my, my income statement is tied out to my income statement uh, on the book basis and I'm in something that's in balance. Each step from here along the way, we're going to enter the M1 adjustments in such a way that we'll start with something in balance. We'll enter, in essence, a journal entry into the tax return. We'll end with something that will be in balance. And then we'll double check our M1 numbers on the book side and the tax side after each step.